Good morning. It's Monday, June 28th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, The Essence of Salvation, and our scripture is Psalm chapter 18. The marginal note is from David. It says, For the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. He sang this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from all his enemies and from Saul. He sang, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me in my place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. The ropes of death entangled me. Floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me. Death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. A church message board I drive by regularly will often advertise the pastor's sermon for the coming Sunday. The message was, Good news, you can be saved. I knew what the message was all about. I've been preaching that same one for over four decades. But in today's culture, I'm certain there were more than a few who don't even read message boards outside churches, and among those who do read, there were more questions than answers to that signed sentence, good news, you can be saved. Among the possibilities, I imagine, saved from what? I'm not drowning. Why would I need to be rescued? Well, for those who would respond like that, the significance of God's salvation is certainly in question and possibly in danger of a shoulder shrug and off to the next round of reading Facebook posts. But for those who read a sentence like that and experience even a slight cringing tug on that line that leads to their conscience, call it guilt if you like, it means that they're not far from the kingdom. It's the quote-unquote distress of that guilty twinge that alerts us in the innermost depths of who we are, that soul-deep spiritual center of our personality, our being, that King David expresses. He called to the Lord in a real-time, physical, personal, political, relational crisis and was saved in every one of those respects. Physically, King Saul was a former friend turned enemy who hated David, and he hunted the countryside to find and kill him. Personally, this crisis turned David's world upside down. Politically, David understood he was God's choice to replace Saul, but there are all sorts of internal and ethical questions about replacing a king you had previously sworn to protect, even with your life. And relationally, David was even more conflicted by the rejection of someone he'd admired and loved. David had no answers. He was on the run, hounded like the guest of honor at a fox hunt, hiding in caves, afraid to sleep. All he could do is cry out to God in that kind of dilemma. And that is the essence of what it means to, as the pastor's message board proclaimed, be saved. That's the very destination to which any of us must arrive if that message is to have meaning between us and God. We have to recognize our lostness and the futility of attempting to be all right when we know deep down we are not all right. We need to recognize our own need of salvation. To be saved, one must know that we are lost. For you today. The next question past that church's message board is, have you been saved? It's not a trick question or a trite old saying. It's the central question a soul needs to know to arrive at the place of internal and eternal peace with a God who cares enough to ask the question. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.